Transocean is the world's premier offshore drilling contractor. We have rig operations all across the world in harsh environment locations through to ultra deep water locations. The problems we, we face in the offshore world are typically to improve our operators' drilling performance by reducing the well construction time along with removing our own people from, uh, from harm's way in what we call the, the red zone areas of, uh, of the rig. Red zone areas are, are areas of elevated risk and uh, they're areas that we manage very, very closely to ensure that our, uh, our people are protected. And that was really the, the problem that, um, that we approached ARC Specialties with. We wanted to tackle our highest resource loaded um, task on the rig of running riser. So pretty quickly, ARC identified that, you know, this is a perfect, um, perfect task for a robot to take on. The biggest challenge we found when we moved robots offshore and onto drill ships was the environment. It's a dynamic environment. In a factory, everything's bolted down, everything's repeatable. On a drill ship, it's nothing like that. We have rain, we have water, we have spray from waves, and we have variable parts, not only in position, but the parts themselves. Because after they've been underwater for a few days, uh, there's marine growth, there's a lot of variation like that. So that's what made industrial robotics applicable to offshore applications. It's advances in adaptive control that allow the robot to determine what the changing conditions are and then deal with it. This is work that can take several days to, uh, to accomplish. Um, you know, running riser, you know, down to say, you know, around about 10,000 feet of water in, uh, in 75 foot sections takes, uh, takes quite a bit of, um, of rig time to achieve. But really it was, um, you know, ARC sort of working with FANUC uh, to identify how we would use robots in this particular environment. Arc Specialties came to FANUC and just was in need of, of getting a, a reliable robot, uh, something that, had, that you could get great support on 24-7, uh, um, even helping out with their engineering teams when they couldn't get the solutions to work. Uh, we would work with them and provide a solution for their end users and customers that help make them successful and FANUC successful. We decided to use FANUC robots in this application because first, reliability. When you're offshore, rig time's over a million a day. Failure's not an option. We actually send three robots out there in case one goes down. Fortunately, we've never needed it. And so the biggest feature that I liked on FANUC robots was reliability. So the environment was one factor. Um, the vessel also is in motion and that motion is different to the, uh, to the motion of the riser. So we needed a solution that um, could accommodate uh, differences in relative motion between the vessel and the riser string, as well as um, a task that, um, that although it's re uh, repetitive, it's not reliably repeatable. So what I mean by that is the position of the riser changes um, joint to joint. One of the other enabling technologies that we're using that's present on the FANUC robot is the soft float technology. Soft float allows the robot to actually float without loading the gearbox and the motors in any desired plane or axis. The reason we're using this feature is we're having to torque these bolts to 18,000 foot-pounds of torque. There's no robot on the planet that can withstand this kind of torque. So the only way we can do it is with a reaction arm. So the robot has to allow this torquing tool to float until the reaction arm engages a rigid point nearby. And if, if the robot's servos are engaged during this portion, we'd actually damage the robot. But with soft float, we're able to let the robot float, reaction arm engages, and then we're using that to resist the 18,000 foot-pounds of torque. We're using several software options to uh, facilitate this job. First is we're using IR vision because you never know where the bolts are, either in the bolt rack or on the riser. So IR vision allows us to find where the bolts are and where the bolts should go. And plus the bolts are traditional hexagonal bolts. So in order to engage them with a wrench, we have to know the clocking of the bolt. And so the IR vision system gives us all that data. And it's been highly successful off the bat to the point where, you know, in our first riser runs, you know, we, we were able to reduce the number of people um, in that red zone area to, uh, to zero while, uh, you know, while we had equipment moving. And uh, we we're very close to, to having uh, zero people in that area at all throughout the riser, um, riser operation. 
This is just the beginning. We're starting to move robots out of the factory and closer to the problem. We have 50 years of industrial robotic experience that we've developed in industry and it's been quite successful. And so what we're doing, instead of trying to invent new robots, we're trying to apply the technology that has been used successfully in industry for decades.